All right, well, I guess that card doesn't activate. I'll just throw that away. What, what else do I got? Uh huh. Nope. And oh yeah, Swords of a Revealing Light. So you um, take care of that. Um, well, I'll just take care of that for you. There we go. And I think face up on the field, and I think that goes into no, it stays in defense position. Okay. This is depressing. Yeah, it is. If only there was a way I could play a card game on my own without looking like a total loser. Sounds like you need to try digital card games. Say, that's not a bad idea. Hey, it's your turn. Hello, hello everyone. I am Andrew Dornett, also known as the 12th Gun here on YouTube, and today is another video essay. As you might have guessed from the sketch at the beginning, this time around we are talking about digital card games. Just like with World Conqueror 3D, this will be a sub-series of video essays on, well, digital card games. You might be wondering, why am I talking about digital card games? Well, it all began when the world started to end. All right, the breaking news, a record shattering. 6.6 .6 million Americans filed for unemployment. As we speak, 31 states are heading in the wrong direction. We are in the middle of a pandemic that has collided with a failure in leadership. It made me realize that I wanted to have some time to sit down with my friends and play some card games or board games. However, this turned out to be a serious conflict of interest between wanting to hang out with my friends and trying to do my part to keep people safe. Enter the digital card game. Ah, the digital card game. A true friend to those who want to play the physical games in question, but either don't have friends or access to current friends to play with. Specifically, for this first essay, we're going to take a look at my two favorite Yu-Gi-Oh games for the Game Boy Advance, The Sacred Cards and The Eternal Duelist Soul. This video essay will be divided into several parts. The intro, the rundown, and the main body, which will be divided into two parts, and the conclusion. All of these parts will be listed using YouTube's new chapter system with timestamps down in the description below. So hopefully you'll be able to scrub along that little time bar thing and be able to jump around to the different chapters of the video. Without further ado, let's get started. Part one, the sacred cards. Now I can already hear you all going, why, why, why at how this game looks and oh boy, is it weird. However, I would like to raise that while the presentation of this game isn't the best, it's the writing and the mechanics that make you want to explore the world and duel with the other duelists. I wrote in my notes that this game has an open world with a question mark next to it, as I'm not 100% sure if you could even call this an open world. Perhaps in the most basic sense, it is, as you gain access to different areas of the game world that you can freely move between. The best mechanics and the sacred cards by far are the card costs and the anti cards, which we'll get into later. With the card cost, you can't just put all your best cards into your deck because each card has a certain point cost value and you can only use so many points with your deck. What makes this so great of a mechanic is that it encourages you to duel other players because the more you duel, the higher your point limit gets, allowing you to use more powerful cards. Likewise, the anti-card mechanic is also amazing because it adds a risk reward to dueling. What you do is you go into your trunk and offer up a card as an anti-card. This is similar to the prize card mechanic in the Pokemon training card game, except when you win the duel, you get your opponent's card, and if they win the duel, they get your card. Unlike a lot of other Yu-Gi-Oh games, or even just digital card games and digital tabletop games in general, the Sacred Card actually has some resemblance of a story mode. In it, you play as a silent protagonist by the name of your choosing, who is apparently friends with Joey and Yugi from the show. 
It's the day of a big citywide tournament and you have to find 8 total locator cards to find the location of the final dueling area. The story does seem a bit basic and even borrows the whole 8 badges of honor thing from the Pokemon series. There's even an evil team that tries to get in your way and they're all really weird and also their leader strays up kills people. But it's all an attempt to make a story that's engaging enough for you to see it all the way to its finale. I'll be honest, there's a lot about the sacred cards that I could talk about. I love all the weird twists that the story takes, the evil team, some of the crazy exploits you can do with how the game processes the order of operations in a duel, and so much more that I'm not sure if I could fit it all into this video, especially since I still need to talk about Part 2, The Eternal Duelist Soul. Before we begin, I would like to throw out a disclaimer that I have not yet officially beaten the Eternal Duelist Soul. Instead, I will be talking solely on the mechanics of the game rather than any story, if there is any. Mmm, just listen to that! This was my first ever Yu-Gi-Oh game for the Game Boy Advance, and I loved it so much. Now, despite loving this game, I was actually god-awful at it when I was a kid. I remember that I never really got a strong grasp of the rules and always did whatever the heck I wanted, which usually meant that I almost always lost my duels. Nowadays, I have a much stronger understanding of the various rules of Yu-Gi-Oh and, more importantly, how this game functions. You see, unlike with the sacred cards, you can't just sacrifice your creatures, activate a trap card, and then summon your higher level monsters. The rules are a lot more stricter now, which means you can't just have your way with the duel. But this is a good thing, as the stricter rules force you to really think about your actions and really get yourself familiar with your various cards. To be more specific, back in Sacred Cards, you had a text-based menu that would pop up upon hitting B when selecting a card. In this game, you simply press A to select a card, and then get the option to either view, use, summon, or attack depending on the context. This super clean and more modern UI design helps limit the possible errors a player can make simply by mashing buttons. Now, mistakes can still be made, especially if you misread card descriptions, but it's more forgiving. Now, you're probably saying, well, okay, the new UI is nice and all, but what about the rest of the game? To that, I shall assure you that the rest of the game is pretty fun. Specifically, one mechanic I would like to bring to light is the calendar system, which starts on January 1st, 2001, and advances one day every time you either win or lose a duel. This is pretty nice, but you might be wondering, why does the calendar system exist at all? Well, for one simple reason, events. Every in-game Wednesday, there is an event called Yu-Gi-Oh! Weekly, wherein you get some cards as part of a newsletter, but you don't actually read the newsletter. Then, roughly once every couple of weeks, you get Yu-Gi-Oh! Monthly, which gives you more cards. These are both nice additions to the booster packs you get as prizes for winning duels. I will say that the one thing I don't like about getting the booster packs from these events is that you can't stockpile them. You open them immediately. Now, this is a similar problem with getting booster packs from other duelists when you beat them in a duel, and it's the same problem I have with the Pokemon trading card game for the Game Boy Color, but that's a topic for another video. In the previous part, I mentioned an interesting exploit in the mechanics of Sacred Cards duels that let you get an edge. I haven't found any such exploits in the Eternal Duelist Soul. What I did find was that Tristan is the easiest opponent to duel and is usually a total pushover. This makes him an excellent tool for forcing days to pass in the end game calendar system so you can get those sweet extra cards. Now at this point you're probably wondering to yourself, did I really just watch an 8-10 to 10 minute video about the Yu-Gi-Oh games for the Game Boy Advance? And the answer is yes, and I appreciate you. To quickly summarize all of my points, Yu-Gi-Oh! The Sacred Cards and Yu-Gi-Oh! The Eternal Duelist Soul are both excellent ways of experiencing the card game if playing with another person simply isn't possible. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As a quick reminder, this is part one of a multi-part sub-series of video essays on digital card games. If you enjoy me doing video essays, let me know by subscribing and hitting that like button. Additionally, tell me so in the comments down below. Also, if you enjoy my content and want to know ways to support me and the content, I have a link to the support the content page down in the description below. Additionally, I will have a playlist linked in the description that takes you to all of the video essays I've done so far. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!